Hello and welcome back to this very long-awaited final part to the Porsche tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and I know that a lot of you have been waiting anxiously a very long time for this final section and I do apologize for the wait. It has been uh, far, far too long, but we're going to go ahead and finish it up today as I know that a lot of you have been wanting to. And what we're going to be doing, for those of you that aren't or don't remember or aren't sure, is we're going to go ahead and render our car today. Now, in the last section, uh, whenever that was, something like a year ago, like I said, it's been a long time, uh, we pretty much finished up the modeling of the car. Now, it's not absolutely complete. You know, there's definitely some areas that I would like to do more of the model of. You know, we never modeled the interior of the wheels. Some of the, the fog lights in here need some more modeling. Um, I did go in and do a little bit of modeling just for the basic headlights, just so it shows up in the render, but it's nothing fancy. Um, and really, it's just very much approximated. I also did just a little bit of cleanup work on the model as far as sharpening up some of these creases, uh, evening out the curves on the paneling for the sides, particularly uh, this side panel and the door panel and the back panel here. Just kind of evening those up so that our reflections show up nicely. And then, like I said, I just kind of sharpened up a few areas. But other than that, it's almost exactly the same model that uh, we left off in with or left off with in part nine, I believe it was. And so we're just gonna be looking at the rendering side today or lighting and rendering. And we're gonna go ahead and be rendering in Lux Render uh, for a couple of different reasons. One is that due to the nature of the car being a more realistic subject matter than what we work with a lot of times, Lux Render is actually perfect for doing this kind of thing because it allows us to get a much more realistic result with fairly minimal effort uh, than using the blender internal would. We could definitely get this same kind of result using the blender internal, but it would take a lot more tweaking, a lot more know-how to get this same kind of result. Uh, one of the downsides to Lux Render, of course, is that it's obnoxiously slow when it comes to the rendering time, but since we've got a lot of time on our hands, that's okay. And one of the other main reasons that we're going to be using Lux Render is because it has a very good car shape car paint shader that allow us to get this car paint effect very, very nicely and get a lot more depth to the shader than we would be able to in Blender. Now, you might be able to replicate it in Blender with some work, but it, like I said, I mean, just that, it would take a fair bit more work than it would in Lux Render. So, uh, I will point out that I am using... Um, I'm using a lace or very recent build from graphicall.org. If I pull up my splash screen here, uh, you can actually see that I'm using revision 34481 um, from graphicall.org. So you can just download that if you want. I'm also using a weekly build of Lux Render of the 0 0.8 development version. Uh, I'm using both of these just because since development changes keep happening, both on the Blender side and the Lux Render side, I'm just trying to stay as up to date as possible. And actually, if you were to have updated Blender or actually Lux Blend since the introduction of Lux Render tutorial, you'd actually find that they probably won't work together. And so, if any of you are having trouble with Lux Render, I do encourage you to get the latest version of Blender uh, from graphicall.org, the latest SVN version, and also the latest Lux Blend version that you can get, again, from the wiki page, which I will include in the tutorial description. Now, I'm not going to be giving much of an introduction to Lux Render. If you're not familiar with it, do check out my previous tutorial. But now we're just going to mostly be focusing on lighting our car and set up, setting up all the materials. So the basic scene that I have, don't actually need that, uh, but the basic scene that I have is, of course, all the different car components, most of them separated out based on the material that they'll need. And then I've got my camera set up here, and I just have a very basic ground plane set up. So what we're going to be doing is setting up all the materials and, of course, the lighting. Let's go ahead and do the lighting first, since that's going to be one of the key components to getting this to work correctly. And the way that I'm going to light this is much the way that uh, professional car make makers and such actually light their own cars when showing them off, and that is with a single large area lamp uh, hovering directly above the car, which will give us these really nice highlights that you see in here, you know, along the paneling and such. And so it'll actually just illuminate everything really nicely while keeping the sides fairly uh, 
just fairly evenly illuminated and without putting too many awkward highlights on it. So the way that we're going to do this is just by using a area light. So let's just hit shift A, add in a lamp and an area. And on this, what I want to do is go ahead and increase the size of it, not the actual scale of it by scaling it, but actually the emitting plane. So let's go over to the lamp properties. And what I want to do is change the size to a rectangle or the shape to a rectangle such that it fits with the shape of the car a little better. And then we can just drag up on the X until it's about twice the width of the car and also on the Y until again it's about twice the length of the car just so it's basically proportionally larger than the car itself. And that ought to work well. We'll go ahead and leave the gain, the importance, the power, the efficacy, uh, all of the default values for now. Let's switch into side view by hitting three and then let's just hit G and Z, lock it to the Z axis and go ahead and move it up somewhere right in there. Let's save our file real quick and let's just see what happens if we go ahead and render our scene now. You'll notice that I've already got Lux Render set up and in fact if we go into the add-ons we can actually see uh, I'm using version, well I guess it's officially 0.7.1 but actually I believe it's newer than that. Uh, again you can just get it directly from the Lux Render or Lux Blend wiki page that I've included in the tutorial description. But I'm just using all the default settings. I've got uh, Lux Render Scene, Lux Render Material, Lux Render Objects all set to export. I'm rendering, the, running the renderer, uh, and then all of these settings I've just left at the default, and we actually don't need to use networking. Uh, so we don't have to do anything with that. Uh, we don't have any materials set up, and so let's just go ahead and click Render Image. Now, if we go ahead and follow along in the console here, we should be able to see it working, and everything looks good so far, except that you can see that if we look at the render result here, or the status, it's actually stopped. And the reason for this is that we don't have any materials set up in our scene yet, and so Lux Render is not actually able to render the objects. And so what we can do is let's just grab the ground plane, and let's first add in a material to this. So we'll just click New. And I'm just going to use a, a glossy, and we're going to go ahead and do a very dark glossy material on this, say like 0 0.002. So it's almost black, but it'll get a really nice reflection on the car. And in order to, like right now, it's basically, it's not a mirror, but it's highly reflective. And we want something that, you know, if you look back to our image here, we want something that's going to be a little bit, a little smoother, a little glossy, but just kind of shows these soft reflections in it. We don't want it to actually distract from the car body. So let's set the roughness on this um, probably up to about 0.1 or so. Ought to be just about right. And before adding any more materials, let's go ahead and try rendering this again and see what happens. And again, you can go you can see that it's stopped. And actually, I believe one of the uh, one of the problems actually is I believe the my Lux Runner path is actually incorrect at the moment due to the fact that I've actually been working on multiple machines on this. So let me just set this up real quickly. Okay, with the correct path now set, we can go ahead and render our image again. And you can see that it's running longer and Lux Runner pops right up. Now, you can see our ground plane is showing up just fine, but we don't see our car yet. And this is because we haven't added the materials to it. So let's do that now. So we'll go in here cancel this and then let's set up first all of our materials. So the first material that we want to set up is of course the most important one being the car paint shader. So I'm just going to select the body here. Let's go over to the materials. We'll add in a new material and we're going to go ahead and make our car orange. So let's go ahead and name this car paint orange. And then we want to choose the the car paint shader. And at first the car paint shader may look a little bit intimidating. Uh, all these settings down here are the ones that we want to focus on. You notice we've got three different specular colors, three M's, uh, M1 through 3, R1 through 3, and then also the absorption depth, absorption color, and the diffuse color. Well, let's kind of go through each one of these. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the diffuse color. It's the main thing that we want to look at. And this is just going to be the base color for our material. And in this case, I'm going to use a nice kind of bright orange. And then the next one is our specular colors. And the specular colors are really cool because it allows us to set three of them rather than just a single one like Blender normally allows you to set. And so we can get a lot more depth to our specular highlights rather than saying using 
just white or just blue. And so to make this look good, what I'm going to do is set this to each one of them, basically a slightly lighter orange. So this first one will be a fairly light orange somewhere in there. This next one will be really more of a really, really light yellow maybe a little brighter in there, something like that. And then this last one will be just solid white. Or actually, let's do a little bit less than solid white. There we go, something like that. And then we have these three options here. And these first ones are going to affect the glossiness of the reflections for our car shader. So for example, at, uh, at solid one, you're basically going to have You'll have reflections, but they'll be very blurred out. So you're going to have really blurry reflections. If you were to set it at 0 0.0001, which is the minimum value, a uh, thing to note is that if you actually set it to zero, it actually maxes out rather than minimizes it. So if you set it to 0 0.0001, you'll have really, really sharp, crisp reflections. And so for this, you know, kind of like our ground plane that you see in here, we want not 100% sharp reflections, but slightly blurry ones, you know, kind of to get that speckled effect that you get in car paint. And so I'm going to go ahead and set each one of these to say 0 0.001 and 0 0.001 and 0 0.001. That'll give us pretty sharp reflections, but with just a little bit of blur to them. And then the next one is our R1 through R3 shaders. And this basically allows us to affect the amount of specularity for each one of these channels. And so if we were to set, say, uh, this first one to uh, R, it'd be 00, 0 or 0 0.0001 again, same, same values as these basically, then our first specular color would have very soft specular highlights. Or if we were to set it all the way to 1, it would have really sharp highlights. So again, we're going to set these to a fairly low value of 0 0.025 on each one of these. Uh, I want actually each one of these to be fairly consistent. You know, you could definitely fine fine tune them all you wanted to get something a little bit more accurate or what whatever you want. But this is the result that I found to work well. And then lastly, going back up to the top is we have the absorption depth and the absorption color. We're not going to be using these today, but what it is basically is if we set the absorption color, black is the default, so it doesn't absorb, but if we were to set it to, say, blue, then it would actually absorb any blue lights or the blue color from our white lights and mix it with the orange, giving us that mixed result. So you can actually change the colors. But what's cool about the absorption is it allows you to basically change the color of the car based on where it's being lit. So you see some cars that have the... Uh, the paint on them that in where it's more illuminated, you see a slight color uh, variation and such. And th so that's kind of what it allows you to get. And the absorption depth uh, is how far that light's going to be absorbed into the car paint. And I will, I've also attached to the description uh, the wiki link on Lux Render Materials that points to the, the car paint shader. And they definitely go through and describe it a lot better than I can. And particularly the absorption depth and the absorption colors are really well demonstrated there. So I do encourage you to check those out if you're unsure on those. So with this setup, let's go ahead and just do a test render real quick. We'll just do a render image. Wait for this to pop up. It shouldn't be too long. And just a moment. There we are. And we can see this starts to load the scene. And in just a moment, we should see it start to render. Now, right now, since we haven't assigned materials to all of our objects, we should only see the car body and the ground plane show up. And that's exactly what we get. So this is looking good. Now, we're not going to worry about the amount of lighting or anything like that. That's one of the advantages of Lux Render is that it allows you, using the tone mapping and the light groups, to actually adjust that in post-processing. So you'll notice like here, I could go in and adjust the gain on the lamp, increase it or decrease it. And so it really allows me to do some fine tuning within the, the render process rather than doing that in Blender and having to re-export every single time. But we want to go ahead and stop this and set up the rest of our materials. And the rest of the materials are going to be pretty simple. Uh, the first one that we're going to do is the car trim, or actually this bottom paneling. Uh, based on the reference that I'm kind of working from, this is going to have the same car paint shader, except that it's going to be in black. And so let's just go ahead and assign that car paint orange, and then let's duplicate it. And we'll go ahead and name this 
as car paint black. And what I want to do is change the diffuse color, not to a solid black, but to a really, really dark gray right in there, or even actually technically that's a really dark orange. And then this one, we're going to first take all the way down to black, and actually we can copy this, then paste it in there by hitting Control C and Control V. And then we're going to take this up to kind of a dark gray and a really light gray. And then this one, maybe we'll take a little bit more back to white somewhere in there. So we just kind of get that variation on the values. And that's it for that one. You know, we're using the same M's and R values that we used on the orange. And so we just need to set up a couple more materials, and that is namely the glass and the metal. So the glass material is going to be pretty easy. We're just going to go in here. For the glass, we can go ahead and just use the glass type. Now I'm using the regular glass rather than glass 2. Uh, you can go ahead and read more about those again on the material wikis. Uh, like I was saying, you can go ahead, you know, if you want to read more about the individual glass types, then the material section of the LuxRender wiki is a really good place to check. So adding in the glass, then we just need to look at a couple settings. We're going to leave the reflection color and the transmission color the default. And actually, in fact, we're only going to do one setting, and that is the IOR value. In this case, I'm going to use 1.4, which will be a good kind of thicker glass slash plastic value. Should work well. And we're going to go ahead, we'll name this, and then we're going to add this glass material to the headlight lenses here. Just like that and also the tail lights here. Okay, and then I want to go ahead, oh, and actually we'll go ahead and, well, no, we won't set it to the mirrors. Uh, let's go ahead and do the metal, which will be a lot of the trim section. So let's just say we'll select one metal piece here, such as the headlights, and we'll click new, and we can name this as metal. And for this one, we're gonna use the, uh, the shiny metal preset makes really good uh, metal materials. And we're just going to set the reflection color to kind of a darker gray and the specular color to a slightly lighter gray, something like that. And then let's go ahead and we'll set the, the roughness value to 0.01 on each one of these. So again, we'll have slightly blurred reflections, but they'll still be pretty nice and crisp. And actually, let's go ahead and set this a little bit darker, say something in there. Okay, uh, that's actually more for like a chrome material such that the the shininess of the chrome is actually defined by the reflections, not by the color of the material. And now I want to go ahead and assign this metal to all of our other pieces right in here. So we'll do that one. Uh, we've got the, the grills down here. Oh, and actually I missed one of the glass pieces right here. Uh, I want to set the... Uh, the metal to this trim right here. And I think that is it. Okay, uh, I'm going to set the mirror to be our same black car paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in a tire material. So we'll grab a tire and we're going to use a glossy material for this. You might think that we would want to use a matte, but in fact, we do want to use the glossy because even rubber has a slight reflective quality to it. We just, what we'll do is we'll just set the roughness to be really high. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give it a, a fairly dark diffuse. We might even add some slight blue into, into the diffuse since rubber tends to have a slight blue tone to it. We use something pretty dark like that. And then the absorption color, we can leave the, the default. And the specular color, we're just going to set at a slightly darker gray belt like that. And then we'll set the roughness to 0.8 on each one of these. So pretty high. Uh, anything over about 0.8 is going too far. And then we can go ahead and assign it to the other parts of the tires. And I guess I, oh, I didn't name it. So we'll just call that tire. And then you'll notice that since I set set the wheels to be turned slightly for the front, just to add a little bit more interest, uh, I got to do it on both, both of these. These are actually set up to, or this other one, copies the rot I think copies the rotation of one of these. Ah, there we go. So this tire copies the rotation of those, and then I actually forgot to set those across, but just a very quick little effect to add a little bit more interest to our final result. Okay, so assigning both of these, 
like that. And then lastly is the, the car wheel is I'm gonna go in here and this will be the wheel material. We're gonna use a, a shiny metal and we're gonna set the reflection color to almost black and the specular color to be fairly light in there. And then again, we'll set the, the roughness value uh, to we're gonna do 0.05 on this, so slightly more slightly more blurred than the regular metal that we did, but definitely not nearly as blurred as the tires themselves. Uh, and then the last one that we need to do, even though we're not gonna see it in our render, is the mirror. And in fact, we'll just go ahead and use the mirror material that we see right there. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and render this to see what we get. And I will just pause the recording while it's loading this up because this will take just a little while. But I will point out one thing that after I export this first time with all of my materials and everything set up, if you need to do any tweaking of the materials, you can go ahead and uncheck the LXO box here so that you only export the materials and the scene to actually save a good bit of time. Okay, after a minute or two of letting it load due to the high poly count of the the car, you know, since it actually exports with the subsurf modifiers and everything applied, uh, we can see it rendering here and it's coming along pretty nicely and it looks pretty good, except that our lights are very, very blown out. And this is something that I, when I was testing this, I actually struggled with quite a bit because if we were to go into Blender and change the energy of our light way down, you actually would notice very, very little difference. And this is something I actually went to the LuxRender support or IRC and asked about, and it turns out that the Reinhard slash nonlinear tone mapping kernel tries to even out the brightness throughout the scene. And so since we're using a dark background and a bright light, it actually evens everything out, such that if we were to actually change the brightness of the lamp, it would re-brighten it based on the darkness of the background. And so what we wanna do is actually change the tone mapping kernel over to linear, and now we can see the actual result. So at this point, what we can do is start adjusting things like the sensitivity to brighten this up, or we can, we can boost the exposure, maybe set that to there, bring this up just a little bit, play with the f-stop any way that we want, and just kind of play with it until you get something about what you want. Now, we might want to adjust our lights a little bit, but you know it's entirely up to you at this point to kind of tweak it until you get the result that you're looking for. You know, we can play with this any way that we need. And it's just a matter of fine tuning to your particular taste. And in this case, I feel that maybe the result is a little bit too light. We're not really getting the highlights that I wanna see here on the side of the car. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to stop this render and we're gonna go ahead and try it again. Because the main thing that I wanna change here is I want to go ahead and scale up this light so that we see it a lot more on the sides of the car. And so we're gonna go in here and let's just adjust the uh, the size, I'm going to go ahead and do it from top view just so we can really see it. Let's boost the X value to about twice what it is. Somewhere right about in there should be about good, maybe a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and boost this one up quite a bit as well. So again, we're sticking with the same basic proportions, but it's much, much larger. And this actually should give us a slightly better result to better illuminate the car and get us those really nice highlights that we're seeing along the side here that look really good. And maybe I'm also going to boost the, the orange of the car just a little bit to make it a little bit more rich. Somewhere right in there should be good. Okay, so again, I will, this time I'm not going to, well, actually, I guess I suppose I probably do need to export the objects since I adjusted the size of the lamp here. Uh, that would be a good question for some of the Lux render developers on whether lamps are considered or the scale of it is considered in the object, but I assume that it is. So for the time being, we'll leave them all checked and just go ahead and click render again and wait for this to export. And so again, after letting it load, we can see it starting to render out here. Now, this is just the very initial stages. Uh, there we go. Now we can start to actually see it. So 
Unfortunately, we do have to do all the tone mapping again. I'm not sure of, of a way to actually load that at render time, except maybe if you um, load in the LuxRender files manually. I'm not sure, but that would be something to experiment with for sure. So we, now we can just go ahead. You can see that our orange looks a lot better on the car. We're starting to get some of these highlights in here. Now we could have probably scaled it up a bit more, but just for the sake of the, tu the tutorial, I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. Instead, I'm just going to set this up to be somewhere about what I like. And that looks, that's starting to look pretty good right in there, actually. Maybe boost the exposure just a little bit. Or actually, let's go down here. And now we can actually go over to the light groups. In this case, we only have one light. So let's just boost this a little bit. Maybe something right about in there. Go back over here. Set the f-stop a little higher or a little lower. And you can see, you know, it doesn't take it doesn't take much to adjust it. Just small changes at a time. And maybe uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty good right in there. And so at this point, we would just let this run. We could go ahead and apply the tone mapping if we wanted. You could go in. Uh, if you wanted to set up some lens effects, you could do some vignetting or something like that. Now, in this case, you don't really need to do much of that just because we've already got this black background in here. Uh, you can also enable Bloom if you want, based in LuxRender itself. Or you could go ahead and set up all this kind of stuff in the Blender Compositor just based on this single image. So entirely up to what you want to do, but LuxRender does give you a fair good few options for doing these kinds of things uh, right at render time, which actually works pretty nicely. But that pretty much finishes it up. So I do, again, I apologize for the extreme weight on this tutorial. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but hopefully some of you will have found it useful. And maybe one of these days we can follow it up with a second car tutorial that will be a bit more accurate, because I will have to admit there are more things wrong with this car model than I would like to... Um, go over actually uh, particularly if you compare back to a lot of our references and such there's quite a few things that are inaccurate maybe a little bit messy or just flat out completely wrong but leaving that for another day uh, hope you enjoy this and i'll see you next time